is Kino for Real Life People here today. And it's a little bright behind me, so please forgive me. But um, I didn't know how. I kind of got messed up with scheduling a live today uh, on my channel. So anyway, welcome to my kitchen. It just seems very bright behind me. Maybe I can counteract it a little bit with some brighter light. Help it a little bit, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. Happy hump day. Huh, it might help a little bit. Hi guys. Today I am making a Greek style meatloaf um, and meatballs. I'm gonna do some meatballs in the pan so that you can see them right away and then I'll make some mini meatloafs and pop them in the oven. Um, I'm just using what I have on hand. So let's talk ingredients, you guys. So I had a pound of ground chicken in my freezer and I'm not real thrilled with it. I usually make like chicken nuggets or something like that with it when I'm in the mood for that. But um, I thought, well, you know, I'm doing the whole salad thing right now. I'm enjoying lots more vegetables than I ever did before on keto. I uh, hit a big plateau. So I'm eating protein and vegetables. And I thought this would be a nice little flavor boost to my salad that I'm eating every day. So I've got a pound of ground chicken. And I've got some fresh spinach. You can use one to two cups. You can add as much of this as you like. It's what I have on hand, so that's what I'm using. All right, this is really a no-brainer. You can use any kind of ground meat you want, pork, chicken, turkey, beef, whatever you happen to have on hand. Uh, you've got some spinach, one to two cups of that. I also have a container of feta cheese, and I'm gonna just mix that in there. Feta cheese is a kind of a dry, crumbly cheese. It's Greek, it uh, has a salty texture, so you wanna go a little lighter on your spices when you're seasoning this. I do have a little bit of pork panko. I'm just gonna add just enough. I'm gonna eyeball this, guys. I've never made it before, so it's not like I have a recipe written down or anything, but I'm just gonna do it to give it a little body. I also have um, my seasonings, and somewhere around here I had an egg. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it was hiding from me. So, and I've got an egg as a binder. Now on my seasonings, I do have some pink Himalayan salt. Again, I'm gonna kinda go a little easy on it because the cheese has got some salt in it, and so does the pork panko. Um, I'm using the... I'm using this uh, Rebel Root seasoning. It's a Greek flavored seasoning. You can use whichever one you have on hand. You could use a little fennel if you want. I wish I had a little, I don't, but you get the idea. Uh, so you can make this any flavor you like. I've also got some of this wonderful cracked pepper from Rebel Root. It is so fresh and delicious, nice flavor. I forgot onions on my list last night at the grocery store, so I'm just using some dehydrated onions to put in there. And this also has garlic in it, so this one has garlic in it, so there we've got that. But anyways, guys, let's get busy, let's get crack a lack and let's get going. Um, you can make mini meatloaves, you can take a muffin pan and you can make little ones, you could just bake them all in the oven if you like. I like to bake my meatloaves 375 so they will cook a little bit quicker but at the same time I like the way the meat tastes at 375 it doesn't taste quite so watery it has that mmm or you can do like I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a couple of little shaped lobes on this pan covered with parchment paper and then I'm also gonna use my skillet to make a few meatballs uh, let me grab one more ingredient and that would be a little fat because ground, this is ground chicken, it doesn't have as much fat, so to this, I'm gonna add just a little bit of fat, I'm gonna give a drizzle. Now, if you're using a fattier cut of ground meat, say meat, say ground beef or pork, then obviously you uh, wouldn't have to add any extra fat. Or if you're using a dark turkey meat that has fat. But if you've got some lean stuff, extra lean ground beef, extra lean turkey uh, or chicken, always add a little bit of fat. Let me grab a bowl real quick. I'm going to let you know I have scrubbed all hands on deck, but you're going to see me going back and forth here because I'm washing, washing, washing. I'm working with chicken number one, so I don't want to cross-contaminate, <laughs> and we're all want to, we're trying to be really careful during this time about hand washing and getting even, you know, being careful about what we're doing, all right? So before we get going, I'm just going to not touch this. I'm just going to use this method of slice open the package and then just 
do it this way and peel it back, touching the outer edge. And I'm just gonna plop that meat right down there. No touch, hands-free. And then I'm going to get a little bit of onion in here. Use as much or as little as you like. I love onions, so I'm going to just take the top off and I'm gonna, I like to do about two tablespoons because that actually, once it hydrates, it adds lots and lots of flavor. So I've got that. Sprinkle again, salt, pepper to taste. I like the pepper. I'm gonna love that. It's gonna be so delicious. This Rebel Root, oh my God, y'all. You can get it on Amazon or you can go to their website. But I tell you what, it is the freshest. I love putting it on my salads because it's it's just, it's, it's addictive. My husband got into it. I had to get another bottle. <laughs> I love that pepper. And then again, this is by the same company. I got the six pack. If you get the six pack of their seasoning, which is Mexican seasoning, Italian, Greek, uh, everything bagel, uh, the black pepper, and one other flavor, you will save a bunch of money doing it that way. So I'm gonna go a little bit on this Greek here. I'm gonna really ramp up the taste of that. I'm gonna crack an egg. Pop that in there, toss it. And then I'm gonna just lightly chop my spinach, you guys. I'm gonna, I'll check on comments when I get done here. But I'm gonna take this spinach, which has already been washed. And if I had more, I might add just a titch more, but I really just want the flavor and the color in there. It's gonna blend itself. You could probably sub if you've got um, frozen spinach. You could take it and make sure you thaw it and drain it, squeeze all the moisture out of it. You don't want soggy, wet spinach in your meatloaf. But just get it into little bitty pieces, like so, and then drop that all in there. Get it going. Then we're gonna go ahead and open up this cheese, which I hadn't even opened it yet. Again, I'm just gonna peel the top off. You can get small crumble or large crumble. This is just traditional. Again, it's pungent, it tastes salty, it's got that little, mm, it's so good on salads. And that's what got me thinking about this. I was like, mmm, I could put some of that on a salad. But I'm probably gonna go about a half a cup to two thirds of a cup right there. And I'm not worried about it because it's gonna scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So it'll get a little smushy in there. I'm gonna put the lid back on. I am gonna give a little drizzle of fat. Maybe, maybe two tablespoons, three tablespoons of fat, just to give it some texture there. And then a little bit of the pork panko. Again, they're salty. You can just buy regular pork skins and put them through the process of yourself or you can do like I do, and you get the pork panko by the pound bag. And this is probably about a half a cup that I'm putting in here. There we go, because this is a quarter cup. And that's it, that's all you do, guys. And we're just gonna give this a good mix now. And it's so pretty, I, I'm gonna just let you see it right there. Now, I'm a hands girl, you can use a spoon if you want but I'm gonna use my hands because I like the way it mixes. And then I'm going to wash my hands and wash my hands. But let's just, uh, let me get a plate out here because I wanna divide this up while my hands are still in this. And this hand is good. Here we go. So I'm gonna put this plate here so that you can see and I'm going to just make little meatballs. And for it, I'm gonna use a cookie scoop or a little miniature scooper here and just pop them out. And you do as many as, you can make these up just like this, put them in your freezer if you wanted to. You could just freeze them and have them ready to cook. Or you can just go ahead and get them made and then put them in the freezer. So this is a nice way to incorporate this style of recipe. You could do it with any, any kind of meat you want. And it could be just even a traditional style meatball or meatloaf. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, 
eight. Oops, that one got a little. And nine. I'm gonna make nine little meatballs. That'll make a nice little pan of these. Just like that, guys. And then I've got probably about half of this mix mixture left. And while I've got my hands out, I've got my little pan right here, and I've got my oven already preheated to 350 degrees. And this is about how much is left. There's still quite a bit there. And I'm gonna just kinda do like this and see if I can get this to divide into three evenly. All right. So I'm just gonna take and make, they're just serving size. There we go. This will make a nice little side dish here when I eat my salad later on. It's gonna have good vegetable, good cheese. You can make it stand up. I, I kind of did them like a Twinkie shape. <laughs> there we go. Just kind of flat and pat shape any way you want. This one I think is a little bit bigger. I'll just add a little to this one here. Yeah, it's slightly bigger. You can use the scale if you want to be very precise and weigh everything out. But again, we just want little loaves. Just like that. And voila, now I can go over here and scrub a dub dub my hands. And I'm using the back of my hand here. And I'll probably end up washing my hands again because I still have to get them into the pan. So I'm gonna get these ones in this oven here. And that'll probably be about 30 minutes, you guys. 30, just check on them after 30 minutes. Um, because they're small and individual, they won't take as long as, say, a traditional meatloaf. So give them about 30 minutes on 375. You just want them to be golden. You want the juices to run clear. You want to make sure that they're done in the middle. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and get it to about 250 right there. And I'm going to put some oil in the pan. You just want to take these little meatballs and fry them up, basically. And then you could take uh, any type of topping. Say you wanted to just do maybe some zucchini and you wanted to run it through, you know, one of those little spiralizers or uh, you wanted to do some zero carb pasta. You could make your own little pasta up and saute it and put these uh, meatballs on it. It would be absolutely delicious. I personally am just going to cook them up and then I'm just going to put them on the side and have a nice salad on the side with it. But it's completely up to you how you want to enjoy eating them. You could just put a nice veg, you could put some cauliflower mash, however you wanted to. So I'm just going to get this hot and while I'm doing that, I will grab my glasses while that's heating up and then I can see your comments when I look you guys up and I should be able to see this. Oh my code my code make sure my volume's down that's one thing that drives me nuts mm -mm -mm. pull up pull up pull up i guess we're having internet trouble too because uh i had to switch to 5g yep that's what it is let's go over here and switch to 5g when it gets windy here, my internet goes down like just nobody's business. So let's see if that made a difference. Connect to the internet. Tap to retry. There we go. Yes. Okay. Let me go over here to Keto for Real Life People. Ah, there I am. I found me. Um, let's see here. All right. So I can see y'all coming in. Hello, Melissa. Anyone know what time this starts? Well, um, guys, I'm trying to figure it out. I set it for 1 o'clock Texas time, but then it said 11 a.m., and I, I guess it's just YouTube time settings. New for me to try to figure out the feature. I'm 85. I got no time to wait. Oh, I got time to wait. <laughs> that was funny, Rosie. Um, I can see this two stuff mushrooms. Yes, that would be a great idea. I'd cook meatballs in the oven with loaves, and you could do that too, but I think it'd be just fun to just 
cook them like this for y'all because you're watching me do it. Because I'm with you. Easier is better always. Uh, <laughs> no sense to mess up a pan. Well, there is if you didn't get to see the product done. What are the mushrooms by the olive oil for? Oh, I had them out because I was putting them on my salad. But you, if you wanted to chop some, oops, if you wanted to chop some up and put it in your, uh, in your meatloaf, you definitely could do that. And also, say you don't have pork panko or you don't have uh, pork skins to make your own crumbs, you can really dice up their mushrooms super fine, like bread crumbs, and they will work as a filler as well. So just an alternative for you. I could have, I probably could have, could have, but I wanted to use the pork panko. So yes, now my oil is shimmering in the pan, which tells me that it should be hot enough here to get this going. I didn't, yep, there's the little sizzle, the teeniest little sizzle. And I'm gonna get them in the pan. And it is chicken, guys. It's so, it's very important to make sure that you get these 100% done. You know, sometimes if you're cooking a, a traditional meatball out of pork or even beef particularly, if it had a titch of pinkness, you wouldn't really worry about it. But always make sure that your chicken is thoroughly 100% done, as well as your turkey. We do not want salmonella at all. Well, again, I touched, let me wash. Fresh towels. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this plate right here, y'all. So I wanna show you, see this is what my salads are looking like. And I'm fixing to upload some videos that I had done some live videos on Facebook. But this is what my salads are are looking like. Um, it's it's a kind. Believe it or not, this is a small salad. Okay, so I've got some spring mix right here, full of wonderful mixture of greens, all organic. Um, and then I've got a little bit. You see a small handful of tomatoes. There's my sliced mushrooms, some cucumbers, and even some baby carrots. So I've got those out. If I wanted to now, just to complement my little meatballs, I could add just a little bit of this feta cheese. And I like the smaller crumbles for this, just a little bit. You could add a few nuts if you like. You could choose whatever dressing you want. You could do an oil and vinegar, a bacon fat, ranch, creamy Italian, Greek style. But Beware when you're doing your salad dressings that you don't get any creepy carbs or sneaky sugars. So always look for that. Um, and I would I would say that some people would go, well, you know, Nancy, they don't use really good oil in their salad dressings, store-bought ones. And I have to agree with you guys. If you want to be as clean as possible, experiment, make your own salad dressings. They're one of the easiest things you can do. But it's not the end of the world. You know, you do what you can do. There's what I call good, better, best, all right? So would it be better to have a very sugary, sweet dressing? Or would it be better to have a dressing that maybe doesn't have the perfect oil in it, but it's low carb and zero sugar? That's what you're looking for. You could always do better, but do the best you can with whatever you've got, guys. I do make certain dressings. They're on my website, Keto for Real Life People. Um, I like to make my own French dressing. I like to make my own ranch dressing. I like to make my own Thousand Island dressing. Um, I make one called Blue Ranch, which me is just making ranch and adding blue cheese and then letting it set because it's the perfect flavor. Sometimes I add Frank's Red Hot to my blue cheese, then I make like a, a buffalo blue. You know, just be creative with it. What did I do with my tongs? Or did I even get tongs? There, there. I did not. I'm going to check to see if we are getting a little brownness. Yes, we are. They are so pretty. They smell delicious already. And we just want to keep turning these. And I agree with the, one of the viewers who said it'd be just really easy to pop these in the oven. They really would. You could save a lot of time by just putting these on some parchment paper and giving a little brush of oil and putting, putting, putting them on the pan and baking them at the same time. 
But I have to say, the caramelization already happening here is beautiful. So we'll just keep going there. If you guys have any questions for me, please please feel free to ask, and I will uh, I will answer them. Love the salad, but hubby doesn't. Quandary. You know what? It doesn't matter if hubby likes salad or not. He doesn't have to eat the salad. If you love it, do it. You know, my husband and I have been together for 30 years, and he has a whole bunch of food that he loves to eat that I don't particularly care for, and vice versa. And, you know, being the female that I am over the years, I've put him through hell and back trying all the healthy stuff. <laughs> you know? Um, but what we've come down to is, it's okay to have different things on the same night. You know, he's like, I'm in the mood for lasagna. I'm in the mood for tacos. I'm in the mood. And mind you, it could be keto. But a lot of times he just, he's like, no, I just, I don't want your keto stuff. I want the real deal. So I have separate. Um, one of the biggest things I do is I'll buy a, a, I buy a bowl or a big thing of spring mix. And... Sometimes I'll, I'll mix it up with and add some romaine lettuce to it. But, you know, I went to the store and I bought this big Tupperware-style bowl. And I put my greens in it for the week. It fluffs them up. It keeps them fresher longer than that tight, compact container they come in. And I can reach in here as many times as I want and make up a plate of salad. It's just ready to go. Um, I've got another container where all my mushrooms are slide, or all my cucumbers. These are already pre-done for me. Um, I, I just keep my mushrooms sort of dry and vice, and same on here. So you could have this ready to go at all times in your fridge. Um, broccoli florets. Meal prep is a, one of the best things you can do for yourself to make your eating journey, way of eating, a lot easier. Let me grab this here. I'm just going to keep turning these guys. You just keep turning them in the pan until you get them all done. And it doesn't take all that long. They're turning out quite beautiful. I can't wait to try them. And like I said, I've really never even made this before. I was just thinking to myself, you know, what can I make? What live can I do? Because it's been a little bit since I've done a live. I've had viruses and stuff, not the bad ones, but I've had some pretty gnarly stuff happen in the last couple weeks, so that kind of changed my schedule. But, uh, so I basically told myself, just use whatever you have on hand and make it work. So I came up with this, this is what I had on hand, and I've never tried it, but it sounds good to me. Let's see here. Linda says, you're so calm and collected. Yeah, when I get in the kitchen, you guys, if you were sitting here with me right now, we would be having so much fun. I guarantee you, there's nothing more fun to me than when I have a girls' weekend or a family gathering for me to be in the kitchen doing my thing and having everybody sitting around or standing around talking to me and keeping me company. And I invariably end up talking to people and teaching them about things or maybe they didn't know that mushrooms are super high in potassium or they didn't understand how wonderful these greens are or how easy it is to whip something up. So that's just my wheelhouse, I guess. And, and, and that's where I feel most comfortable. Um, uh, Bridget says, I'm with you. My hubby and I have been eating different dinners at the same time for years. I cook both for us, but there are lots of foods I don't like that he does. Yeah, you know, I guess back in the day when I was younger, you know, it was like we only had one kind of toothpaste. And it's taken almost 30 plus years until this, just this last year, I finally said, you know what, I'm tired of that toothpaste. She's like, I still like it. I'm like, I'm tired of that toothpaste. So we have two kinds of toothpaste. He's like, that's just craziness. It works, you know. He finally has his own shampoos. I mean, that one came years ago, but... When you're starting out and you're a young family, you economize, you, you, you try to just, everybody eats the same thing, everybody uses the same soaps, everybody uses the same shampoos, everybody uses the same toothpaste, and, and, and that's just the way it goes. But as you get a little bit older, and as the kids start moving out and on, you realize that it doesn't cost that much more to have two different kinds of shampoo or body washes or two separate kinds of meals going on. 
and life is much happier that way. All these, I'm telling y'all, these are just smelling divine, divine. I'm trying to make sure that I'm e evenly browning them as they, oh, and the cheese is starting to melt a bit now. It's not an ooey gooey melty cheese, by the way, so it's going to hold up very well in here. It's not like it's oozing all over the pan. So if you were using like Monterey Jack cheese or or Swiss or something of that nature, then yeah, let's turn it this way. Then it would probably be melted and making a mess and getting too brown. So let's just uh, get that there and just keep rolling them. I have my little roly poly meatballs here. This one's wanting to come apart. I don't want it to. I might have say that I could maybe have gone a little finer on my spinach, on the chop. But at the same time, it's holding up really well and looking pretty. So, I, I thought mm, maybe it was a little too big. But there we go. Whew, I'm telling you what. It is warming up here in East Texas. Yesterday we hit almost 85 degrees. And it's only March. I'm telling you. And now that I've got the oven going... And this going, and I'm wearing black today to offset these god awful green eyes I got going on. I am burning up. I need to turn the AC on, that's for sure. I probably will after this is over, but sometimes that interferes with my sound. I see a comment popping up. Um, joining late, we'll catch the beginning later. All right, Kathy. Bridget says, we also use different toothpaste and floss. It doesn't cost any more since you would be using twice as much of one in kind instead of splitting it into two kinds. Perfect way to look at that, Bridget. I mean, honestly, that's the truth of it. We, you know, we became individuals who can coexist together. <laughs> and don't get me wrong. Now, there are still lots of things that we share and have in common and foods that we like to eat together and things like that. But it's just a lot simpler and a lot more... It makes for a happy, happy relationship, you know? Nobody's having to give up one thing for the other one constantly. So, here we go. Oh, these are looking good. I think I'm getting close to getting done on some of these. Oh, that one slip on me. But I can feel them getting firm now, you guys. You can surely tell the difference. But again, I do want to make sure that I'm, I'd be rather be safe than sorry. I need to, in, you know what I need to invest in, I've always wanted, is one of those little uh, digital read thermometers where you just shoot it and then you can tell what the temperature is because you do want this to be like at 165 or 175 on chicken. You can get by with lower temperatures on beef, obviously, but with chicken, you want it to be 100% uh, bacteria free when you're cooking this meat. You don't want any room to grow anything, guys. I guess I sound a little overly cautious. You never hear me talk about uh, salmonella or germs, you know, cross-contamination. But with times being what they are, and everybody's so concerned about getting sick, seriously sick, uh, I'd just, I, I just rather err on the side of caution, you know? So I'm going to, obviously this one here is kind of split open. So I'm going to do a little check. I'm not putting anything on my plate until I check the interior. That is 100% done. So yay on there. Um, I know some of these smaller ones are. And you can tell because the meat is very firm now. Where it was very soft, now it's like you can feel the texture on it. A few of these larger ones, I might give an extra minute or two. A couple of these little baby ones though. I sure, I'm sure. There we go. That one looks like a little scallop or a tater tot. Nice and done. I got one, one really good size one here. That one, see, that one has a little bounce to it. So this one is very, very firm. That one, I, I'm, I'm just like, mm, I'm feeling it. Of course, you get to those little cheesy spots. Yeah. There we 
go. And the temperature will continue to rise. All right, guys. I, I'm putting them on this plate. I don't know that I would eat this many, but hey, if I don't, it's like taking a to-go bag home. That's nice and firm. I just want them off of here. And I'm going to just unplug this real quick and eliminate that noise. Now then, I want you to see how beautiful this is. And I do have a fork out. I'm going to let it cool down for just a minute while I dress the salad. But aren't those just gorgeous? They are lightly golden. You just keep turning them and turning them. There you go until they are nice and firm. I can still hear myself over here on this uh, video. Now, I don't know what kind of dressing I want today. I do know, let's see, what do we have here? This one has a total of two sugars, guys. And I'm just gonna grab it. It is a balsamic vinaigrette. And I'm only, thank goodness it has a little thing. I'm only gonna go with just enough to wet my lettuce. Maybe three tablespoons, maybe two. I think I can afford that little bit in there. <sighs> there we go. This is lovely. It is beautiful. The reason you're going to start seeing a little bit more style, you're going to see a lot more salads on my plate, is that I am 50 plus years. I'm going to be 55 this year. Uh, I'm going through the change, and for all of my YouTube people who don't know it, going through the change has been Oh, life changing and I'm not talking about it in a good way <laughs> so I have done a lot of research since November and I pretty much kept very keto and very low carb uh, now I am in, I'm kind of I had eliminated a lot of bulk vegetables I was just basically eat some protein and a little bit of veg and I just started piling my weight back on and so for those of you who don't know by Adding my vegetables back in the form of nice leafy greens, getting some good healthy fats. Uh, I am feeling better. I'm balancing out with the foods that I'm eating. I'm making sure my body is nourished and I am I'm going back down the other direction. So I hope you guys try this. If you do, go over to Facebook where there's Keto for Real Life People page and group. There's also the Keto for Real Life People. It's called the KFRLP Clean Eating Kitchen or Group. And for those of you who support me through Patreon or the Facebook supporter button, there's also a private group for you all just to do whatever you want in there. So this is my chicken meatball with feta cheese, spinach, Greek seasoning. Mmm. Mmm, bon appetito. That's really good. What a different flavor profile. I can taste the feta cheese. There's that nice little greenness from the spinach. The Greek seasoning is really standing out to me. It has that wonderful, just kind of almost a slight sweet taste to it. It is organic Mediterranean oregano, organic onion, organic garlic, um, organic black pepper, organic parsley, organic conti cinnamon, and ground nutmeg. Oh, what a wonderful combination. And this meal is so fresh. And as the warm weather starts rolling in to spring and summer, this is an obvious wonderful meal that you could, you could eat and not feel like you're gonna be like weighed down or bloated. I'm gonna see if there's any comments. Mmm, nice glass of wine would be good with that too. Girl, you ain't kidding about Aunt menopause. Yeah. This is true from the wanderer. <laughs> yeah, it's real. So um, I am going to, like I said, I got to go over there and see if I can't download from Facebook and upload to YouTube and kind of put those videos there where you can hear everything that's been happening for the last month and the reason I have moved forward into kind of a, a more keto green style eating. That's what I would call it. And it is great, guys. Thank you so much for joining in today. Um, have a blessed one. Remember, fats first, moderate protein, low carb, and get you some.